I was watching the basketball game yesterday, and I started to notice that all of these basketball players were tall. So I thought to myself, well, if they play basketball and they're tall, then maybe if I play basketball, I'll get tall. So I started to think, what would it take for me to get taller and maybe even a little thinner? And I decided I would need to change not only the length of my muscles, but also the length of my bones. So I started to consider and research what would that take and is it possible? <laughs> muscles have four properties. Excitability, which is the ability to respond to stimulation, such as the stimulation of the nervous system, telling the muscles when to contract. Contractility, which is the ability to shorten actively and exert a pull, exerting a pull on the bones, which would cause the bones to rotate around the axes of the joints, which allows us to produce movement. Extensibility, which is the ability to be stretched or extended when at rest. And elasticity, the counterpoint to extensibility, which allows the muscle to rebound to its original length like a rubber band. Let's take the biceps brachii for example. The biceps brachii has two heads, one that comes off the coracoid, one that comes off the supraglenoid tubercle, which then travels down through the intertubercular bicipital groove. It has a common attachment on the radius which is the movable bone of the forearm. When the bicep has normal tone and is healthy, the elbow is slightly flexed. Suppose that we lengthened the bicep. Well, if this was due to neurological dysfunction, then we would have a flaccid paralysis and the elbow would be hyperextended and just flop. If we were actually able to lengthen a muscle, then what would happen is that the bicep would get longer and longer and suddenly become a floppy mess hanging on the front of the humerus. Provided, of course, that it still had its same insertion and origins, now we just have a longer muscle that's going between these attachments. Thixotropy is a property of colloids, and our connective tissues are colloidal in nature. This property, thixotropy, basically means that when the tissue, the connective tissue, is cool, it is less able to be extended and has less elasticity, whereas when we heat it up, it behaves more like jello that's been left out of the refrigerator in that the ground substance starts to expand, creating more distance between the fibers and allowing the tissue to be more stretched and have more elasticity. This is one of the main reasons that warm-up and stretching are not the same thing. Critical interfiber distance is what we achieve when we start to warm up the tissues and when the tissues are healthy. This critical distance between the collagen fibers allows us to maintain both the extensibility property of the tissue as well as the elasticity property of the tissue. It's the ground substance that helps maintain this distance. If the collagen fibers get too close together, then cross linkages form. And when people sit at a desk for a long time or do other activities or lack of activities which have muscles remain in a shortened length, these muscles will experience adaptive shortening because the fibers move closer together and start to form cross bridges between them in the connective tissues also offers an interesting perspective to this idea of lengthening. 
The tricep has three heads, two that come off of the humerus and attach to the olecranon, and then the long head, which comes from the infraglenoid tubercle, also down to the olecranon. Nice tone in the tricep here. It's a healthy muscle. Very often, people say, I want to get rid of this. Well,